Because if without that trust of Carson liking him, it's all for naught. His job here will be over as quick as it started. Radio, thanks again to J-Mac, John McMullen. Nothing new there. J-Mac joins us every single night at 7.30 to drop some knowledge on us, like he always does. Set the record straight. Set me straight. Uh, So good stuff from J-Mac. But let's transition now. And to start off the second hour, I'm excited for our next guest. Uh, You can listen to him right here daily, Monday to Friday, 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. on AM 1490 Sports Betting Radio, as well as phillyvoice.com. And you may be more familiar with looking at his beautiful face instead of listening to his lovely voice. Uh, I exaggerate a little bit for Barrett, but Barrett Brooks joins us (laughs) now, (laughs) pre and post NBC Philly, uh, as well as co-host of The Middle. Super Bowl champ, I should have led with that. Barrett, what's going on, man? I'm good, man. But man, how do you have, how do you have me going right after the Mullen Mafia, man? I, mean, I can't I can't hold up to that. I mean, what do you expect from me? I, I, I only know so much. You know, Jay Jay Mack knows more than me, man. Come on, now you can't have me coming right after him. You could have gave me a little test to breathe a little bit, man. Nah, I, I <laughs> listen, man. Jay Mack is is a god. So it's not it's nothing against you, bro. It's like you you can't win. None of us can win. I, it's not even a knock on I, you. I can't, man. I can't, man. But, hey, man, I appreciate you having me on right now. Thanks a lot, man. Uh, No, you kidding me? Of course. I'm excited to have you. Thank you. I know you're a busy man. All right. So I I don't know where I want to start with you because there's so much to get into, and and we don't even have enough time to talk about our Eagles. But I I guess we can start there. Uh, And since this is the first time you and I are catching up here on the airwaves, let's just give the listeners Barrett's thoughts on everything that's transpired really if you want to go up to Carson Wentz's benching to Doug Peterson's firing to Nick Sirianni's stuttering hiring uh walk us through Parrot's thoughts on all of it man I I just you know even stemming from you know last year and you know I you know my my co-host Seth Joyner on the post-game show with me uh Ray Diddy and, and and Mike it, it, it's one of those things where he said in week four that we have QB trouble. And I was like, no, there's no way we can have QB trouble. We just gave our starting quarterback $128 million. There's no way we're going to go into this and have QB trouble. And lo and behold, week 12, um, you know, well, actually at week 12, yes, Carson goes out and has the worst game of his life in week, um, in, in week 11. So Jalen Hurst comes in. Now, he starts the last four games. Now, I see this happening. I understand why they did it. But you still don't do it, especially when you have a guy that's making $124 million. You know, If you want to see the young guy play, you still start Carson, and then you play the young guy. You don't have this turmoil leading into the offseason. So now, you know, the, the, the fact is, it's, it's not really going to be a, a QB controversy because you're not going to have a thirty-two million or thirty-four, sorry, thirty-four million dollar paperweight sitting on a bench while you have a young Jalen Hurst playing out there for peanuts. It's just not. It's not going to happen. It, you know the dynamics of that happening is just not going to work. So they're going to find a way to fix Carson, and I think them bringing in Nick Sariani as the new head coach is a means of doing that because the, they understand that you know the closest person that to really get to you know pulling out the best in Carson is the fact that, you know, Indianapolis' head coach did it. You know, you, you, you ask a guy to, you know, come and replace him, replace Doug Peterson after he, you know, so essentially they part ways, you know, honorably. I don't think he was just fired. I think they parted ways honorably because at this point, you're, you're asking Doug not to be able to have the power to pick his coaches or pick his players. I, I'd want to get out of here also. So it wasn't just the signal decision of the owner. I think it was a, 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 a decision between the two of them to part ways, and you know that's just how it came out. But I can't. I mean, I can't. I can't get mad at Doug for that. So if you're going to talk about a quarterback battle, that's what happened, man. You know, the, 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 the gist of it is Carson right now is 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 is, is essentially. The reason why we're going through all this right now, Carson's lack of, of ability to go out there and play consistency, is the reason why this entire team is at the point it is right now. I'm with you 100%. And, and I have a quick soundbite 
from uh, Marcus Spears from ESPN's Get Up. Uh, so hopefully you can hear this. I'm just going to play this. It's it's not even a minute, uh, and then I want your reaction to it. So so let's get to this soundbite. It's touching on exactly what you just detailed, Barrett. So perfect segue. That's competition with the wide receivers. That's competition with the DBs. That's competition everywhere, right? And so it's just every everybody is going to compete. Okay, Swagoo, competition at every position. What do you think? <laughs> That's a lie. That's a lie. We're not going to yep. come right off of Sal Pal talking about all of the things the damn Eagles did for Carson Wentz and then come to the next segment and say they got a quarterback competition. The quarterback competition was between Doug Peterson and Carson Wentz, and obviously we know who won that. <laughs> Now we get to a season yep. where Sirianni comes in, a Frank Wright guy, writing on the wall for the Philadelphia Eagles about fixing <laughs> Carson Wentz, and he talking about a quarterback competition. Bro, you literally were brought to Philly to fix Carson Wentz. You were brought there to do that and also have him be the, be the catalyst for what y'all do offensively. But it's a quarterback competition. Gee, I would have heard this before. I didn't hear a quarterback competition my entire life. You know what I knew? All my years in Dallas, Tony <laughs> Romo was going to be the starting quarterback. You know what I knew? In All right. So, uh, did you hear that, Barrett? Well, I didn't hear, but I did hear. I did uh, watch it and hear and hear the um, ah, the, whole, okay. uh, the whole thing. And and I love that. You know, the the the, the only real quarterback controversy is between uh, Carson Wentz and Doug Peterson. He said, "You see who won that competition." So I mean, he's exactly right. You don't have quarterback competition at the, at the quarterback position. It, it just doesn't work. No, and it's. I want your thoughts as. Listen, a, a former player uh, played in the biggest stage there there possibly is in all of sports, the Super Bowl, winning on that biggest stage, being in multiple different professional NFL locker rooms. How is the locker room going to handle all of this with, with Carson Wentz and the firing of Doug? I'm sure a lot of the guys like Doug. I'm sure some of them didn't, but that's not a knock on Doug. That's 53 grown men. Not all 53 are going to like any one person the same, but how are they going to take all of this? And let's say they get to camp and it's not an open competition and Carson doesn't look great. Like there's so much potential tragedy ahead for the Philadelphia Eagles. So as a former player, how is the locker room going to be cool with all this? Well, you know, that's going to be the biggest thing. And, and, and you know, you, 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 think, you think about what Nick Sirianni said. I know everybody's saying he bumbled his words, and he. I'm gonna tell you the truth, bro. I'm not. We're not. I'm not worried about how he does press conferences. Number one, I mean, I don't need a guy with the gift of gab. I don't need the steak oil salesman. You know, I mean, you know, you could have two. There's two extremes, and you got you got you got a, a Belichick type of coach who doesn't give you anything from a media standpoint, and then you had a guy with the gift of gab with Bruce Arians. I play for Bruce Arians. Bruce Arians could sell sand to a uh, a person in the desert. That's how smooth he is. <laughs> But, you know, I understand why Nick Sirianni was in that position. He just didn't know what it is to be on the biggest stage of his life. He is now the head coach and responsible for an entire organization. He is the leader now of, 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 of one of the most ravenous, um, intelligent, going to do their research type of fans in, 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 in all of sports. So he has to understand he's coming into a situation where he can't win, and if he thinks he can win, he's got to work his butt off to get to that position. Only way you could do that is to win. That's how Doug won his guys over and won this, this city over. That's the only way that um, Sirian is going to have to um, do it. Now, in understanding, you know, Frank White, um, Frank White telling him and in preparing him for his, you know, his travel into Philadelphia, he should have known all this stuff was going to happen. So he should made it to, to me at this point. This like water, you know, going off a duck's back. That means nothing to him. But I did hear the key points that I needed to hear from Nick Sirianni to let me know that he's going about it in the right direction. You know, he's going about, you know, making sure that this team understands who he is. He was sending messages out to the really the players and not necessarily to the general public and media right now. You know, listen to what he said. And towards the end, he said the best thing he can say is the start of the connection. That's where he needs to, you know, focus all is it all is, is his coaching on. The start of the connection. The only way you can connect with a player is to show him you can make him better. If you can make a player better, 
then he's more likely to trust you. And once you earn a player's trust, they'll go above and beyond for you. And that was directly pointed to Carson Wentz. He must start that connection and let Carson know that he can make him a better player. And if he can make him a better player, then Carson will trust him. Because at this point, Carson trusts nobody in that locker room. They let his best friend go in the, in the quarterback coach. They let him go. Who else could be his best friend? They're, they're likely not to bring back Zach Ertz. That's his best friend also. So at this point, he's still portrayed. He's back against the wall. Everybody's on him because he got the head coach fired. I mean, he's got to establish that connection with the most important player on his team, and that's Carson Wentz. And the only way he can do that is to start that connection. Because without that trust of Carson liking him, it's all for naught. His job here will be over as quick as it started. Because Carson at this point, feels as though he knows everything. He's got, um, he, he can't be coached any other way. You can hear that from the way he had ended his press conferences. Every time he turned around, he was telling, it, uh, telling the media, hey, I'm going to continue to play the way I'm playing. I'm going to continue to go down and force the ball and, and, and let my receivers go out there and make a play. I'm going to continue. I'm going to continue. Um, we got to do better. It's never, well, I messed up on this play, or I should have done this, or he knows too much. And when all he has to do is sit back and learn, you know, that's when you know your, 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 your career is going to start declining. When you know more than everybody else, you know too much, that means you're not getting better because you're not finding a way to get better. You can always find a way to get better. And the only way you can do that is take constructive criticism and take coaching. And right now, Carson is beyond that at this point, and he has no trust in anybody else in that organization. And I think that's a great point because, one, like Carson knows what to say when things are, are, are rocking. When things are going well, he steps up and says, well, my offensive line did a great job. Man, man Doug called a great game. Man, you know, so Alshon made plays, whoever it was in the past. So he knows what to say when things are going well, but when things are going bad, that's when you start to hear everything that you just outlined, Barrett. So you're like, okay, this guy knows how to play the game, so to speak, to the media and to the fans, but he only plays that game when things are going well. He can't control his emotions and his stubbornness when things start going downhill. And and I think that's the most telltale sign of, all right, this dude, this dude has some work to do. He has to look in a mirror or two once in a while. I don't know. That's what it is. That's it in a nutshell. You know, I understand everybody's talking about his type and yada, 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 his, his strong Christian values, which is a plus. But we also have to understand the fact that there's no perfect person uh, on this earth right now. There's only one perfect person, you know, in my faith that walked the earth, and he's gone right now, eventually going to come back. And that's what Carson is thinking the same thing. So for him to think that he's so perfect that he can't be coached or he can't see things the right way, he's wrong. He knows he's wrong, and he shouldn't be that way. He has never been in a position where he had to ride the bench when he's healthy. The only time he's ever done that is when he's hurt and he can't be out there. This was a slap in his face right now, and he feels though this whole city and team betrayed him. Everybody's talking bad about him. Well, son, you're the one that went out there and put that product on the field. Mm -hmm. You're the one that played bad enough to us to lose that many games. Yes, this team is lacks a lot of talent, but it had enough talent and, and, and wherewithal and will to win that they almost won a lot of games in spite of his mistakes, in spite of his mistakes. I mean, there's only so much you know you can do when you have what is it? Um, what do you have? Uh, 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 14 interceptions. Come on now. I mean, that's totally ridiculous. Uh, what 18 turnovers? That's completely uh, the exact opposite of a, of a quarterback that's supposed to be trending in the right direction. I mean, there were there were times where there were thirty sacks that he gave that had, that were given up when he held the ball for four seconds or or, or more. You, I mean, as an offensive lineman, it's supposed to be two point five seconds, and the ball should be gone. But now we're asking him to block an extra two seconds, and you're and an and offensive of line has been riddled with injuries and not playing at a high level, and you're asking these guys to go up and block for four seconds. Come on now, you know. I mean, that sack that he had, that sack fumble that he had against the Dallas Cowboys. People understand they had max protection on. That means they had seven blockers. You know, they kept being two at no. I'm sorry, three extra blockers because the running back stayed in and the two tight ends stayed in. That's three extra blockers. They sent two wide receivers out on the route. It was a it was a down of which they um the the the, the off the um play caller called the wrong play because they thought they were going to blitz. They did a blitz. They dropped it off into coverage. That means you have three guys um 
triple team and one receiver and two guys doubling the other receiver. And instead of him just learning, all right, we're going to live to fight another day and maybe running and getting two or three yards or, 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 or maybe just throwing the ball away and we go to the next play. He tried to hold the ball and, and – the tight end leaked out late. Before he knew it, it was a sack fumble. Those are the things that you cannot do as a veteran quarterback. Those are the things that are just inexcusable because the defense won that down. From the very beginning when they didn't blitz and they tripled and double teamed your wide receivers, you have to know that the defense won. Let's fight another day. And he refused to think that was his fault, and that's why we're at the point we are with this quarterback situation. Talking with Barrett Brooks. Barrett's bringing the fire tonight. Follow Barrett on Twitter at bbrooks72 NBCS. You can listen to Barrett every day, eleven to one, uh, on the middle with Aton Shander, my guy, and uh, my other guy, Harry Mays. Sorry if to put up with those two knuckleheads, Barrett. Um, <laughs> <laughs> one or it's two. I even like working with them, man. Just, you just you just hold on, man, and just yeah. follow wherever they're going. Man. <laughs> That's it. Man. You hold on for the ride, and you just try and stay with them. Um, all right, try one, to stay with them. Yep. One or two more for you, man. Uh, I want your thoughts, you know, real quick here. Uh, I appreciate your time. But the, the young coaching staff, and you have all these, you know, guys out, out here that do what I do and do what you do. Um, but guys like me, I haven't been in an NFL locker room, so what the hell do I know? But, you know, I, I've said this coaching staff is way too young, and who is Sirianni going to turn to when things get tough? They need that veteran voice from a coaching standpoint. It, can you set the record straight with all of that? As a former player, is it good? Is it bad? Or it doesn't matter that everyone from the coaching uh, standpoint is really under 40 years old? Well, at this point, you know, it doesn't really matter, man, because, you know, if you can show a guy that you can teach him something and, and it fit within the framework of what you're trying to accomplish um, in, that, in that meeting room and on that field, those guys are falling to the ends of the earth. You know, but you have to establish yourself as a coach to know what you're doing. You mean you have to be very solid in how you approach the game. You cannot take a veteran player uh, and, and and just tell them anything and think they're going to ride with you. You have to make sure that you're very skilled in 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 in, in getting your point across to this player, because if you can get you know, a veteran player on your side, like a Brandon Brooks or a Lane Johnson, and they believe in what you're saying with Coach Stoutland, and Stoutland believes also in Nick Sirianni, then the sky's the limit on where that team could go because now he has the backing of the offensive line. And when they talk, everybody listens. You know, I'm not just saying that because from an offensive lineman standpoint, but even when, when you're a guy in the trenches, a la a Fletcher Cox and Brandon Graham, if they can get this defensive coach, Pointing in the right, the defensive line pointing in the right direction, and that defensive line coach believes in what the defense of the young defensive coordinator is saying. Then you know the sky's the limit. They can make they can make a lot of it because if Gallon, I mean uh, Gannon, can go out there and effectively uh, run a defense that 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 highlights their skill set, and it starts working. Oh man. Now you have a young coaching staff, and now the players believe in them, and now they'll take it even further. You know, so, I mean, at this point, you know, you have nothing to lose. You have nothing to lose. But I think it was kind of ignorant that, you know, they, they told Doug P that he can't go out and get his own coaching staff, mm -hmm. but yet they allow this young guy to go do it. See, that's what I don't yeah. understand. I mean, that's why I think that, you know, the Carson thing makes such a difference in everything that's happened over the past year, um, you know, because, I mean, we went from having a Super Bowl-winning head coach Three years in the playoffs, one bad year and he's out. I mean, that's that's just not a, enough of a curve that you would just let a guy go. So it has a lot to do with that. But if they can get Carson on board with their system and get a point in the right direction, and they didn't help themselves by going out and, and, and hiring Brian Johnson, who was you know known him since he's four years old and all that. And I know that really doesn't mean anything because as long as this guy can coach. And then Carson could believe in him. I think he can get the job done. I mean, because he's coached two different coaching styles when he was at the University of Florida. He had Kyle Trask. I mean, this kid almost won the um, won the Heisman year. So Kyle, Kyle Trask put up some great numbers this year. But he also had a guy, Emory Jones, who kind of has the same skill set that um, that Hurts has. So he's 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 definitely definitely fluent in his coaching style. He can get both guys going in the right direction. But will Coach uh, Carson? Get under the tutelage of him. Will he listen to him? Will he listen to Nick Sariani? You know, it, that's the problem. But they have to come in and establish things early. 
They have to. It's a must that they gain the trust of this team. Because this team is not just – they're not just looking at you know them being young, but they're also looking at, all right, a lot of guys in our locker room want to do Staley to get the opportunity to be a head coach. Yep. And they went out and they, 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 they voiced their opinion. Even older players like myself voiced our opinion on who we should have picked. And, and, and Deuce was my guy also. But yet he didn't get an opportunity to become a, a head coach or a coordinator, so he had to leave. So they're gonna, they got a lot, of, you know, a lot of winning to do right now with this young coaching staff. And maybe they come in with a new, a new innovative, um, more spirited type of locker room. Maybe the culture that they're going to bring in is something that this team needs and to get out the old funk. Maybe it's exactly what this team needs. Maybe they know something that we don't know. I don't know, but I mean, they have to gain the trust of these older players like the Lane Johnsons, the Brandon Brooks, uh, if Kelsey comes back, uh, Fletcher Cox, Brandon Graham. Those are the guys that are going to have to win over because at this point, you know, big play slay, if those guys don't feel them or vibe with them, it'll be hard to get those younger guys to point in the right direction and get them to buy into what they're saying also. So much pressure is riding on this team, the coaches, the players, early on. I agree with you 100%. The the pressure early to gain trust on both sides, to have some success, and even just to see the potential of what it could be early uh, is everything. All right, Barrett, last one before I let you go. Who do you like in the Super Bowl this week? Big Red get another one, or does Brady get another one? Man, I'm... it's tough on me, man, because I see this dynamic quarterback with all the speed out there. But then I look at the offensive line that they have, and thinking about what that defensive line with JPP and and um, and, and, and and Barrett did on the outside rushing the passer, I really think that that's going to be ultimately how they win this game. It's going to be a defensive minded game where where Tampa Bay's defense is going to be able to box up. Uh, Patrick Mahomes a little bit, and you know this is the biggest stage that we all know. Brady is one of the guys that that you know he commands that stage. So I think I'm going with Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay at this point has the most experience at the quarterback position, even though you know they won one last year. But that defense, man, Shaq Barrett and JPP with those two linebackers, I mean. Those that tandem right there is along the lines that 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 San Fran tandem that they have with Patrick Willis and Navarro Bowman. I see them at that type of level, and they can run. And I believe that they're going to double team with the safety in, uh, in the corner with 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 Hill, Tyreek Hill, and I think those linebackers can really hold their own against Kelsey and coverage. So I think that's going to be the major point of emphasis. Those linebackers being fast enough to hang with Kelsey, but then the rush with Vita, Vita being back uh, in the middle to stop the run and rush the passer, that's going to be the dynamic um, uh, uh, means of influencing the game. So I'm going, with, I'm going with Tampa Bay squeezing it out, a narrow victory against this vaunted big red offense. <laughs> Barrett. Bring in the knowledge, man. Unbelievable breakdown, entertaining, great stuff. Dude, listen, you did the unthinkable. You started the you started this conversation saying, How do I follow J Mac? You followed him, man. That was unbelievable. <laughs> For real. For real. Good. Well, don't tell him, don't tell him, man, because when I have him on my show, man, he's gonna come with a vengeance, man. <laughs> <laughs> good, good. <laughs> you know, make him step his game up a little bit. Barrett, I appreciate it, man. Hopefully we catch up uh, down the road. No problem, man. I appreciate you having me on, man. Have a good night. Absolutely. You too. There he is, Barrett Brooks. Great stuff. Great stuff. Man. All right, let's get to a break. That ran a couple minutes over, but I'm not apologizing to anyone for that. (laughs) When we come back, another great entertaining guest, John Marks from WIP. Hopefully he's not too mad at me uh, that we're a couple minutes late. But (laughs) we'll get John on the horn and have some fun. The show goes on. The Fix, live in the Prop Swap Studios, AM 1490. Sports betting radio. 